High Fashion Dolls. It is Transformation Tuesday, June 4th. I apologize about my tardiness, Fashion Dolls. As you can see, I am fashionably late. But our very special guest today is a singer, songwriter, and producer from the Baltimore, Maryland area. And I'm super excited to have him here in the dollhouse. Extremely talented, and he's done so much throughout his music career. Ladies and gentlemen, come into the dollhouse today. Give it up for our very special guest, Devon Howard. And I'm going to share this slide with him. Again, I apologize about my tardiness, fashion dolls. As you can see, I am fashionably late. And I totally apologize. Please forgive me, fashion dolls. You know, a girl has to make sure that everything is perfect for today's show. Because we can't mess up, all right? So... While we're waiting on Devon to get here, Fashion Dolls, and he's here. Please forgive me for my tardiness. As you guys can see, I couldn't be fashionably late. So let's welcome my very special guest to the Dollhouse Fashion Dolls, singer, songwriter, producer, Devon Howard. I don't know what happened. I think it just booted Devon out the live. That's crazy. Okay, now I can see it. Let's see. Let's try now. I hope it works. I hope it works. Hmm. What is going on today, IG? I just sent the request. I'm not sure what is going on with IG today. That is so weird. We're having some technical issues here, Fashion Dolls. I'm not sure what is going on. I'm trying to add Devon to the live, and it's not letting me add him. Okay. okay, let me try now. Let's see. Oh, it says you're unable to join. Are you updated, Devon? Give us a minute, Fashion Dolls. Give us a minute. Okay, let me try now. Let's see. Hopefully it works this time, fingers crossed. There we are. There Perfect. We yes. Finally. Welcome, 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 welcome. Thank Please you. forgive me for my tardiness. As you can see, a lady and always has to come fashionably late. Oh, that's, so. fine. <laughs> that's fine. My apologies. This is my first live, so. Oh, it is so such a pleasure to have you here. So before we kick this interview off, how has 2024 been for you so far? Uh, it's been great. You know, it's been a lot of unexpected things in a good way. Um, but it's been great. It's been a great year so far. Yeah. Yes, and you've had so much success this year. While I was in the process of getting my hair and makeup done, I was listening to some of your music, and I must say it is definitely an easy listen. You give me a blend of Michael Jackson. You give me a blend of Maxwell. You wow. give me a blend of Eric Benet. You give me a blend of all of these phenomenal male vocalists. Wow, your song you. is so distinct and it's your own and it's original yeah. it's like old school only, which is what a lot of artists are trying to duplicate in this current age yeah. of music so yeah. we're going to talk about the current age of r&b music in a few but before we get into that are you a baltimore maryland native is that where I, you're from Baltimore? I, I am and you know i'm still in the areas too so you know this is home 
Okay, okay. At what age did you say, or did you develop an ear for music? Well, my father was into music. He was a songwriter, so um, I would listen to him. He would listen to music all the time, so I would sit with him and listen to music, and um, and just watching him have a passion for it, I developed a passion for it as well. And so that's kind of where it came from. So it, for me, it started with songwriting. Okay. And who were some of your musical influences? I'm pretty sure you have church background because a lot of artists start off in the church. And I can go down the list. I'm pretty sure you know yeah. Whitney yeah. Houston. Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Sure. So my background didn't, I, I went to church, but not necessarily from the church, if you know what I mean, you know what I'm saying, as far as singing. Um, but I grew up listening to um, that were influences like Babyface, um, Michael Jackson, of course, Elder Barge, um, Jeffrey Osborne, people like that. Yeah. And just, just loving other people's voices like um, Angela Bofill and Patti LaBelle and Anita Baker. <laughs> and it's so funny you mentioned Patti LaBelle. She just celebrated uh, an 80th yeah. birthday and it's yeah. Black Music Month. So this interview came in perfect yeah. timing. Yeah. So for you growing up, what are some of the greats that you've listened to throughout your music career? And King David said it in the comments. Um, yes, the legends, some of the greats. <laughs> um, some of the greats, like I said, I would listen to my father's collection. So, you know, you could go back to the Manhattans, the Temptations, Ooh. and um, just, you know, I heard a lot of that growing up and I'm the youngest of five. So I, I got to hear a lot of different types of music. So my sisters were listening to gospel. Um, you know, the Clark sisters and, you know, just a whole bunch of the old late 70s, early 80s gospel at that time. And um, then I had another sister listening to more of the R&B stuff that was out, um, Ring My Bell and, our, you know, oh, Pointer Sisters and all that. Other stuff. So I got to hear a lot of stuff growing up. But on my own, I think that um, the people I named already, also New Edition, um, you know, just um, Switch. I, I, I love going back to the old stuff. I've always liked going, even as a young person, I would always go back and listen to the old stuff. Yes, and then you sort of develop your own sound. And I can tell that the names that you just mentioned influenced your music as well. Because yeah. again, you can listen. Yeah, yeah. And so the thing for me too is that I didn't start as a singer. I started as a songwriter. So I had to actually teach myself how to sing um, because, you know, so when you're writing songs, you have to have melodies. So it's like, okay, I got to figure this thing out. And so it took me some time, but, I, you know, like you said, just kind of listening to all the other people, I started to kind of pull some of what they had out and, you know, just kind of infuse it into what would become my style. Now, you also, one thing people don't know about you also is you were a part of a R&B boy band, Me To You. So tell yes. us a little bit about that. Yeah, so um, in the 90s, um, we, I was a part of a group. We, we kind of got together really quick. We got signed really fast, um, I think inside of a year. So we got together, and within the year, we were signed to RCA Records. And um, we came out, we toured. Um, we were label mates with SWV and, um, and Black Girl, if people remember them. Um, yeah. Yeah, and so um, we did a lot of touring and a lot of videos, and we did the circuit, like Soul Train and Apollo, and yeah, so we did a lot of that. So it was a good training ground for me uh, going into my solo years. And SWV and Wendy Williams appeared in one of you guys' yes. music videos. So what was that experience like? Because the 90s, a lot of, I see a lot of artists like Coco Jones, yes. Lucky Day, mm -hmm. Lund, and a lot of them give you that 90s R&B feel. Yeah. So man, what was it like for you? You guys were shooting your music videos. You were signed with RCA. What was that experience um, like? So it's like a whirlwind. When you get on the inside of it, everything moves so fast that uh, you kind of have to look back at it to say, oh, wow, you know what I mean? Because it's always like you shoot a video, you're doing interviews, you go do photo shoots, you got to get on the plane, you got to. So it just moves so quick that um, even with uh, Wendy Williams, she was on the radio at the time um, and she was really nice. And so she came in and she was just kind of there and she just, you know, they <laughs> added it to the video and Big Les. Um, the choreographer, 
as yeah. Lisa, she, yeah, she choreographed for us as well. So she was in the video as well. So it was just a lot of fun then, and um, but just fast. It was just fast paced. So I think now I get to look back and go, wow, you know, I actually did that. You know what I mean? So um, yeah, so I, I look back at it differently than how I experienced it. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but Malcolm Jamal Warner, Theo from the Cosby Show, directed yeah. the second music video. What was that experience like working with him? Um, he was great. Um, he's professional. He's really cool. Um, um, we would talk from time to time past that. So he was really cool, very helpful. Um, but just really encouraging because, you know, he's young. He came into this game really young. And, um, you know, just kind of sewing into us as, you know, a young group and, and to really kind of push forward and, and do the work. So that was, that was his thing. So, but he, you know, he was incredible. It was really great to work with him really easy. Yeah. And you guys also worked with Ron Fair, who's worked with Keisha Cole. You've worked yes. with I hate the late Vincent Herbert, who's yes. worked with Lady Gaga, and he's worked with so many other artists as well, too. What was that experience like for you in your career when you went on solo to work with these amazing producers? Uh, yeah, so again, it's just like the whirlwind thing. It just kind of happens so quick, and when you, when you go into those situations, it's work mode, you know what I mean? So it's like you don't really have time to say, oh, my God, that's, you know, such and such. It's like you gotta go. You gotta go in there with your A game because they're coming in with theirs, and um, oh, yeah. and so with Ron Fair, you know, we were actually doing a song for Warren Hill. It was he's a, he's a saxophone player, so we were singing the vocals to his song, which we wound wound up keeping the song for our album, um, and using the song for our our album. Um, it was just a, a, a very new experience working with him because that was the first time. I got to see a band in the studio performing the song that we were going to sing to. And they did it so fast <laughs> that, again, you just have to be on your A game. So, I mean, literally, I think we were, I forget the studio. It's one of the bigger studios in New York. And, and down the hall was like Conway Twitty, <laughs> you know, one of the country greats. And I was like, oh, my God, this is incredible. And, um, and then Martha Walsh would come in and to, she was doing a session right after us. So it was like, oh, okay. <laughs> we're in this thing for real so yeah so like i said just working with them it's like you have to really come in with the a game so the the starstruck thing kind of goes away really fast and then you kind of got to prove yourself that you are worthy of being there now the group disbanded and you went on to do music and of and put music out in other countries europe and japan what was that experience like you being able to venture off versus being a group? Because um, who was it that said something? Uh, I think it was Candy Burris from Escape. She said, it's different if I'm not over. No, it was Latoya Luckett. It was Latoya Luckett. She said when she went solo from Destiny's Child, she said it's a little bit different because you typically have your bandmates yeah. on stage with you. That was you stepping out and you're doing it on your own independently as yeah. a solo artist. So what was that experience like versus being in a group to now step out on your own? Yes. Yeah. So it was difficult initially. Um, I didn't know what that would look like because I think my whole professional career was with other people. Um, so again, I resorted back to writing and I, I was writing for other people and I was writing stuff, just writing and, and singing it. And, and uh, the producer I was working with at the time, had a connect in in England and mm -hmm. so sent the material there and that's kind of how the whole solo thing came about um I was I was really unsure in the beginning but but you know it started to move and I was like okay so I'm gonna move with it and then from there another situation happened in Japan so I'm like okay I can try I can try this and so it started to work, work out and so I'm, I'm grateful for that you know because I just don't know what I would have just kind of went back into being a writer and a producer otherwise. And you gave us two albums. Um, the first one is Other Side of the Bed, and then you gave us Return to Love. Yes. So recording these albums, when you're in the studio, you're on your own as a solo artist. What is that feeling like for you when you're in that booth You versus having your bandmates yeah. there? Uh -huh. Being a part of a collective and going off and venturing off on your own solo is like 
you look over your shoulder and you look to your bandmate and you know you feed off of each other's energy versus now you're doing it on your own what's that feeling yeah. like for you? so for me the creative part of it you know i've always recorded anyway even outside of the group so i was used to being in studios by myself um I think it's a little different when you have to prove something or you feel like you have to prove something because you're coming from this big situation and um, and you have to kind of measure up in a sense, you know, in people's eyes. Um, and so I think with um, the first album, I had the whole team, I had everything. And I realized that cre creativity wasn't really coming through like I needed it to. So I just kind of got, when I got to Return to Love, I said, you know what? I just want to cancel out everybody, you know, um, and just do the just do the work and just kind of get back to why I love this. You know, business can get in the way, and it just it just the passion kind of leaves a little bit. So I said I'm going to get back to just enjoying it, and so that's what I did. So Return to Love is really just me by myself um, in the studio. I have a studio here at home, and um, just recording and just you know just kind of going with it. And with it. It's what I felt without any interference and that's like okay I, I like this road so if i ever go back into another situation i have to be allowed the opportunity to write and record the way that i feel it and the way i hear it now both albums earned urban ac radio and it was also played on sirius xm yeah. so my goodness how does that experience <laughs> Got your projects out here. The world is hearing it. Yeah, what is that? Yeah. You know, it's funny because, you know, um, this new album, Morning Sun, went to number one on the Amazon sales charts in the whole country, right? And number one in, in Europe on the R&B soul charts. And, and I don't think that I've wrapped my brain around what that is, <laughs> what that, you know, means yet. Um, what what happens is that I jump right back into the work. Okay, what do I have to do next? What's next? What? Let me just kind of keep moving forward and not get caught up in in that because you know it can become oh I got to get another another number one, and I was like you know I don't want to do that. I just want to do the work because that's kind of what you know has pushed it to that point that people received it that way. Is that the work? It's just that really just going in and doing the work, and so that's kind of what I kind of fall back on with that so I, you know I, i'm excited about it i'm happy about it um but i don't want to lose sight on why i do it and um what i get out of it personally you know for myself let's talk about the single forever <laughs> and always and i tell you this single was on repeat while i was in the process of getting ready for today's interview with you it is easy <laughs> to it's oh good this project, Morning Sun, which was released March 5th, 2020, yes. 2024, of this year. So releasing the project, it is out, it is complete. This single, what was the recording process like for you? And what were Ooh. you thinking about at this time to release this single? It, it's funny. This is the, it's the funniest thing is that I, re, I was recording a whole this is during pandemic time, right? Right, pre-pandemic, right into pandemic. And so I was kind of after um, Return to Love, like, mm, you know, do I want to continue to put stuff out? You know, it's still a lot of business. It's, you got to promote, you have to do shows, you have to do all these things. And, you know, I'm like, oh, do I still want to do it to that degree? So I was like, you know, maybe I'll drop a single every now and then. Um, and then during the, and I wasn't really taking it, like moving as serious as I needed to be um, to have something coming out. So I had some, um, some radio DJs who were hitting me up during the pandemic saying, hey, when are you releasing the new record? When are you, when are you releasing the new record? And at that point, it had been like six years, seven years. And I said, okay. So I talked to my, my mixing guy um, and, and I asked him, I said, what song? We've been recording. I've been recording stuff and sending it to you. What do you think could stick? And he said, forever and always. So we went with it. And, you know, and a day or two later, I was getting um, messages saying, hey, you need a promoter. And from there, it just kind of started moving. I didn't know what it was, you know? I was, it was just one of the songs that I had that I recorded. You know, for, I'm my own worst critic. So to me, I didn't see that people would gravitate to it the way they did, you know? And so, because it was just one song of a few songs that I had already recorded. The single reached number one 
on top of the chart. What was it like for you when you got the news? Do you remember where you were when you got the news that the single charted? Um, I, I don't, but I, again, it's just that feeling like, wow, like, is this happening? Is this real? So I immediately I jumped back in the studio <laughs> and started working on the next single, which would become Your Love Is, you know? Yeah. And that and was really well. May 16th. It was released May 16th. Yes. Yeah. 2022. Also, another hit single. Yes. So that went to number one as well. When, when you're writing, when you're sitting in your space and you're writing these singles, where do you pull inspiration from life and love? You know, it's just uh, uh, the experiences of my life. Um, just I'm a, I'm a listener, so I listen to other people's stories when I talk to them and I, I absorb, you know, I'm, I'm, I feel them when it, it's like it's my story when I hear them talking about their life. And I absorb that. And um, just spiritually, just kind of, you know, just releasing all of that and just connecting and just letting it come through. Because when that happens, it comes through quick. And um, I can write really fast. And it's like whatever I put down is what it is. And um, and I don't really mess with it as much when it's that because I just feel like it comes from another place when you can kind of allow yourself to be open enough to receive whatever it is that's being given to you, you know, and I try to stay in that space. So that's why I record a, a lot at night um, because it's quiet. Um, there's a lot of not a lot of uh, not a lot of noise. Sorry. And um, and just, you know, everything can kind of shut down. And, and from there, I can be connected and hours go by you know what's crazy is that not only that but this single the next single charted number one in the u.s and also in the uk and this brings me to my next conversation which we touched on yesterday which is being grounded we talked about being in nature when you're in your element because i know a lot of singers like their element when they are recording mm -hmm. um I know Faith Evans and Janet Jackson, they are two that do not like a whole lot of people in the studio with right. them. It's nerve-wracking. But sh when she did the single with Whitney Houston and Kelly Price, Heartbreak Hotel, they had to work together as a yeah. collective. And we kind of brought her out of her shell. So for you, what type of element do you like when you're writing? Because I know another singer that likes her element is Erica Badu. Yeah. What she would do back in the day, she would have the incense. She would just have her tea. She would have all of these things yeah. that is a part of her brand. And she'd be writing her music. So for you, what type of element do yeah, you like? So I don't know. It's just the mood. I have to be in a mood. There's no particular lighting or anything like that. And um, I can't be in Devon Howard mode. I don't want to look like the pictures and the, the videos and stuff like that. I just want to be in my my night clothes, <laughs> my wrinkled up t-shirt, <laughs> you know, and just kind of just in a very comfortable space so that um, it, nothing gets in the way, you know what I mean? And that I can sit there and I can literally write songs all night. It's like, I don't just write one song a lot of times, I'm just writing. And if I hear a piece of music that, that moves me, then I just want to write it, even if it's not for me. I have a lot of songs written that, that were not even for me, I just wrote them. And that, because that's what, you know, the music inspired me. And, um, and just over the years, I, I have a box of cassette tapes and there's so many tapes. I, have, I found the very first song I ever recorded. And uh, I was like, oh my God, I was 16 years old. And I have the very first song that I recorded. And I was so excited when I, I do remember that. I was so excited to be able to get in the studio and um, to go through that process. And, um, and it was all over the place. <laughs> so, you know, the vocals, but the passion was there. And that's what I heard when I, when I heard it. And now look, looking back, I'm like, wow, look how far I've come. And I have that gauge now to say, okay, wow, this was the beginning of this. And look at where it has led me to. So, and look at you now, you are still giving us ballads of love. Yeah. And with it being Black Music Month, your sound also reminds me of another artist that I've interviewed as well, too. And I could see you two probably collaborating on something. Your sound is very similar. Um, his birthday is today, Stephen Voice, ladies and gentlemen, and his wow. album. Yes, Audio Shock Therapist is out right now. Make sure you guys please go check it out. Yes. 
And you two have a very similar sound. It's very parallel because he likes Michael Jackson as well, too. Yeah. That's one of his influences. And I can tell that Michael has had such a huge impact on you yes. as well as so hi dj juicy um dj juicy says hi Yvonne. hey hey dj juicy how are you hi photos by madeline make sure you guys please go and check her out and you got you're getting so much love in the comments not only that but oh, your wow. album Moments fun is number one it's yes. hit the top of your yes. charts how does that feel you, uh. you've worked on this creation and we're in the midst of the pandemic because a lot of artists especially actors they couldn't put anything out or you know do press yeah. release anything like that, or travel tour anything everything was inside yeah yeah so what was that like for you well thank god for indie radio you know what i mean um indie radio keeps indie music alive and um it allows us a platform and that has grown significantly significantly my tongue is all over the place today, um over the years and um and so it makes it easy for artists like me to have a platform to put music out without having to go through the machine you know the big labels the big the big indie uh, labels and so that has been very um important to indie music in this era um so that's what takes it to number one is that they play it and um and people hear it around the world and um and and that's the blessing to me so i'm excited i get excited when it goes to number one but then i leave it quickly so that i cannot get caught up in it yeah and move on to into the next thing that needs to happen to keep it moving now i'm going to take some questions from the audiences you guys are all coming in welcome if you are just joining um king david wants to know how is art important to society? What was an event you attended as an artist or performance that you will always cherish? Well, art is very important. It shapes, I think it shapes culture. You know, when we look at um, the 60s and the music of the 60s and how, you know, the civil rights and all that was going on then and the music kind of lifted people up out of that, the, the uh, stuff that was going on at that time. So it just kind of, you know, really gave people something to um, inspire to, to hold on to, to fight for. And, um, and I think, you know, that's music is art. Art is life, you know. Um, the one performance that I remember that just really shifted everything for me is I, I got to see Michael Jackson's 30th anniversary um, special. Mm -hmm that um it aired on tv but I, I went to new york to see it and it was otherworldly to me it was you know you had people from all around the world celebrities of every background sports music um actors everybody was there and that this man came out first he came out with his brothers which, which was phenomenal um and then he came out by himself and just, I don't know, it's just like he moves in a spiritual way that I don't think could ever be duplicated because I think people were connected to that. The moment that he hit the stage, especially by himself, it was just something else happening and, I, and, I, and you feel it. And I was like, wow, that's, that's another. We were blessed to have the moment <clears throat> to be alive when he was here. And, um, and, that, and that's what you would feel there. And so I walked away with that, like, wow. That that's another level of, of of commitment, of discipline, of focus, of spirituality, and, and bringing them all together. So that was the, I think that was the biggest one for me. And Janet, I love Janet too. My girl. I think I've seen every tour, but the first one. So I love I love her. Well, when I tell you Michael has left such an impact to this day, we will never be able to forget about the King of Pop or yeah. Whitney Houston, who will always yeah. be one of the greatest of yeah. all time. We've lost so many music icons from yeah. Phyllis Hyman, Jimi Hendrix. Like, yes. It's World Music Month, and we have to pour into these artists, these legends that we've lost in the music game. The Queen of Soul, Aretha Franklin, James Brown. I yeah, could go yeah. on. We'd be but you know, it's so. But you know, the music lives on, though, and that's the thing is that their legacy is in the work and their music, and so we will always have that, and the generations to come will always have that, and 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 
not to compare the newer generation, but when you go back to that old soul sound, it's nostalgic. It lasts forever. And um, it will always be like, like Beethoven, you know, you know, like, like the, like the great um, Van Gogh, like it's, that's what they created. They created art that will last forever. And it, it would be interesting to see how Michael Jackson's music and videos and, and his legacy plays out in a hundred years. Mm-hmm. It, it would be interesting to see how they kind of, you know, recycle it in a hundred years. Cause they're going to, it's just, you know, there's nothing like it. So it would be really interesting to see how that parlays into the future. Absolutely. And darkness, I see you, baby. I, I couldn't see. I took the glasses off so you guys can see my eyes and see that I'm human. I have the glasses off. <laughs> Um, Darkness asked a question. She wants to know, would you ever consider remaking your first song? No. <laughs> because I was 16 and, and I was writing from a 16-year-old's perspective, right? And um, so it just wouldn't have any, um, I would have to rewrite it. Um, but it was, a, it was from a 16-year-old's mindset. It was very juvenile. <laughs> Um, you know, and then you, that's another thing. Yeah, we see a lot of artists you know, because yeah. when you've mentioned, yeah. we, we see the growth. When we mention the King of Pop, we see the growth with him. Yeah. The same with Janet as well. Yeah. Yes, yes. And I never like to go, when I write stuff, I never like to go back and touch it again. You know, it's like, it, that's, it was good for that time. And I've, I've grown from there and I like to keep it moving forward. You know, and like, I, I'm always interested in what's next, like um, creatively, like what's next. Like, I love to get in front of the camera. I'm very shy though, and so it's weird. So, but I like to be in front of the camera because um, I like to create shapes and and just kind of like the clothes and just kind of do different things there. Um, the videographer that I work with, Alvin Gray, who's incredible. Um, he's, we've created some great video work together, um, Lolita. Really is the photographer. I've worked with her since the group days. Um, and uh, she's helped me shape my solo look, right? Um, so we, we, we did a few shoots so that I can get used to not having people <laughs> leaning on people or, or you know. And so, um, but she's still with me to this day. So, but it's creative, we, the creative stuff. So I love to be in front of the camera, but I also like to be behind it as well. Yes. Let me see. Did I miss any questions? Um, DJ Juicy wants to know, what is the stamp or memory you would like to leave on the world? Great question. Whew. I think that for me, I think that love is always the key, right? Oh, yeah. And that love flows through all things. And when you allow it in, great things can happen. And so when I'm writing, um, I, I like to write and let it come through but i'm always thinking about how it impacts as well and um and i think that's the key is that if we just focus on love we so much could change all right so much could change so that's that's the goal for me and my music is to always have something real and something connected to love and self-worth and you know you know real thought um beyond just something you can dance to or whatever, that if you just kind of listen to the lyric, that there's something that you can feel and hopefully it leads you to some, some to love, you know? And what's so crazy is that I've watched your videos. I've listened to the singles, every album <sighs> before coming on and doing the show with you. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know you were shy. Like, Very but when shy. you do your video, it's, you know who you remind me of? You remind me of Janet because Janet is shy. But when she yeah. gets on stage, she says she doesn't consider herself as one of the best dancers. I'm like, girl, yeah. are you kidding? You can dance. We've seen all of your videos and the art that she puts into it. We've seen her behind the scenes choreographing with the other dancers yeah. as well, too, making sure that everything is perfection. And that's the same. A lot of artists, but I never knew that about you. Yeah, yeah very shy. Um, I think for me, because I went to the Baltimore School for the Arts and I graduated there as a dancer, by the way. And, um, and that discipline has helped me um, to move in my 
the music and the art because I can I can get in the studio and that can come out and it's, it comes out you know as, as the way that it needs to and same thing in front of the camera and then it goes right back to being like oh the camera's gone I'm kind of back to you know being a little withdrawn but um that discipline really helps though um and really that focus and, and kind of knowing what it is that you want to do and just kind of moving in that and living in that space at that time but then like publicly i don't really like to go out too much <laughs> um you know it's just it's just weird to me and i'm i am an absorber too so i feel i feel people's emotions when i'm out and so i'm like oof, ooh, you know so i just sometimes just stay home <laughs> You sing about life. You sing about love and falling in love and being in a relationship in that moment. And King David asked a good question. He was, he said, are you shy at the moment? He says, no, need. you're doing really good, so keep it up. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, what was the question? <laughs> Sorry. He says, are you shy in the moment? Um, I think I'm shy in general. When I walk into a room and it's a lot of people, it's like, oof, you know. Um, I think one-on-one, -on -one, it's according to the person, you know. Um, but yeah, I think I'm just shy in general. Um, but again, when it's time to do the work, and it's, I know that getting on stage is like, I remember I did um, a festival here in, in, Balt in Baltimore, the Stone Soul. And one of the dancers who had a big personality, but he kind of went into like, oh my God, it's like over a hundred thousand people here. Why are you not nervous? Because we rehearsed. we rehearsed it already. We already know what we're doing. So let's just do what we do. And then just let that be what it is. Cause this is what we're giving to them. This is our, a gift that we're giving them. So let's just focus into that and not, um, you know, not think of it any other type of way. So that's kind of how I look at it. When I get in front of the camera, you know, I'm using my my talent to kind of as my gift to give. And I think that's kind of how we should look at life is like we should be always giving what God has given us out. Always. Yes. Yeah. All the and I'm looking through the comments and you're getting so much love. The White Newsom says, congratulations to you and all your accomplishments. Thank you. So proud of you. Thank you Big so much. Big Wolf says, I love what you're doing. Bring back the great music. Wow, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Really How does that make you feel to know that your music is leaving an impact on people and helping them through relationships, just falling in love? Because your music gives you a special feeling. Yeah, but I think that's the goal. I think um, that's the one thing when I'm recording. Um, that's when I think about who's listening. Like when I'm writing, I really just kind of let it come through. But when I'm recording, I just want people to feel what the message is in the song. And so when that resonates with people, you know, that's a, that is a really good feeling to know that it works, right? And that it's not, for me, it's not a gimmick. It's not um, contrived. This, this is not me trying to do it. This is what I have. And I'm not going to be the best singer. I'm not going to be the best writer. But this is, I'm going to give you exactly what I have to the best of my ability. And, that, and with the hopes that you can connect to it and that it could mean something to you in your life the way it, it does for me. You know? So I think that's always the key for me is to make sure that it's authentic and, and real. And, um, and that it connects. And so when people um, comment on the music, uh, I'm really grateful for that because it, it's like a job well done, so to speak. You know what I mean? That that God is saying you did what I get, you know, what I intended for you to do. And DJ Juicy says that she loves your humble spirit and energy. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That's sweet. And your music is not only that has made an impact but you are the award winner of the Heineken ASCAP Initiative for Songwriting. How does that make you feel? Um, again, it's just like, it's amazing. It's amazing in the sense that people can see um, value in your work, right? And, and 
it, 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 it's that thing for me, though, I don't like to get caught up in it too much, that it starts to influence what I do. Um, because I don't want to be like, oh, you know, I have this award, or oh, I have this number one, or oh, I have that. I just want to be able to stay honest and true to the, 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 the craft. And um, so I'm excited about that when that happens. And but then I leave it. And then because until you said it, you know, it's out of my it's out of my brain, so to speak, because um, I want to, like I said, I keep moving forward to the next thing. And, and for me, the goal was never to to win anything or, you know, or be number one. The goal was just to um, literally, honestly, the, my very first goal was to be on an album cover. <laughs> I just wanted to be on an album cover. And um, and and from there, I was like, but I really love music. And, I, and I, my father gets all the credit for that because I would just sit and listen to music with him for hours, especially on the weekends when he was off. Music played all day, all night. And, um, uh, and he taught me a lot as a child, like to listen to harmonies and to listen to music, you know, musical parts and, arrangements and stuff like that and so i would listen to it and i think i remember um i was really young the song always and forever by he Wade, um, um would make me cry and i didn't understand the there was an emotion to that record that even as a child that i felt it i didn't know what it was because you know there was no love <laughs> at the time for me but um but you know like i said love is universal even everybody feels love or w would want to and I just felt that record, even to this day, it's just so emotional. It's an emotional record, and it's very pure and real and honest. And so, you know, for me, that's what I chase after more than anything else. So I'm happy for everything that happens because of the work. But it's like, okay, I, the other thing is to make sure that people feel it and that I'm good. That makes me more excited. And, um, and then focus on the next thing coming. God, taste, actor, singer, writer says you yes, are the my real brother. One. That's my brother. Awesome, gifted, talented, authentic, and welcome to the dollhouse. If you're just coming in, God, taste, I see you. I'm back again. Um, Fat Man is on, says still young. <laughs> Let me see. Yeah, call Did taste. We, we sang together um, when we were younger. So that's that's one of my really good friends. An artistic, very artistic, very, um, he's very talented in so many different areas, and I'm so happy and proud of him. How does it feel to have people that have been there with you from the beginning? Because you said that you and then God taste saying when you were younger together, mm -hmm. and now to still be doing it, following your passion, following your dreams years later. How does that feel? Yeah, it feels good because, you know, we do that for each other. I just saw um, Carl Taze in the play um, Soulmates um, a few weeks ago. And so, you know, I came out to support him and he always supports me. So, you know, we're going to always do that. You know, we've always done that. So it feels good to know that, you know, people, there's no um, competition. It's just love. And that's what I feel from him. And that's what I hope he feels from me. DJ Juicy wants to know, when are you coming to the UK? Really soon, you know, with this album, um, I'm getting a lot of um, requests to do that. So I'm looking forward to that. And um, so hopefully sometime soon, we, we, we'll, we'll start planning in the summer. Um, so trying to get some dates on the book, so it should be fun. And that brings us to the next question, King David um, asked you as well too in the comments. He said, any performances coming up for this, this summer of 2024? Yeah, so I'm having, I have some things coming. Um, we're just working them out now. So I'll probably um, announce them as they, you know, as we, as we finalize things. I don't like to speak on it too soon until the ink is dried, but um, just to make sure everything is what it needs to be. So um, definitely, I'm looking forward to that too this, this time around. Yeah, I'm excited about performing again so now that everything is open back up we just recently had coachella not too long ago a lot of film festivals a lot of music festivals this is the summer for a lot of music events that are going on again june is black music month so i can't wait to see so your projects your project that is out now yeah. your performances everything coming up yeah thank you thank you i'm excited i'm excited about it 
And Darkness wants to know, can you give us a little something a cappella? Oh, no. <laughs> Tell Darkness, allergies and hoarseness is not going to allow nothing coming out of this throat today. I'm sorry. It, but, yeah, I'm just, you know, I'm barely, you know, getting that out, out talking. So if I sing it, it would be not the best. But I, I will another time. I, I, I promise. Let me see. Did I miss any questions? Let me see. Um, oh, thank you. Thank you, Darkness. Let me see. Did I miss any other things? Oh, yes. I'm going to follow back. I'm going to follow you back, my love. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Darkness says, artists supporting artists is how we should get through the tough times for sure. Absolutely. I and the agree. music and there's a lot of comp it's a lot of comparisons to the artists, and it's just like every artist has their own level, their own individuality, and that's what makes them so unique. Mm -hmm. So that was going to be my other question for you. How do you feel about you know other artists? You know, how can I say this? Because I had the same conversation with Steven, like being put into a box or categorized. Like mm -hmm. every artist has their own niche, their own lane of whatever music that they want to. And you know where I'm going with this. Beyonce just did the the country album, and a lot of people giving her so much backlash for it. It's just like an artist is gonna expand and do different artistry. The album or whatever the sound is not going to be the same all the time. Mm -hmm. So be ready for a sound. And I think what really got the audience is that they were not used to a sound like this. They're so used to her singing dangerously in love and crazy yeah. in love. To the point where it's just like, okay, she's got to expand. Every artist can't stay in that lane forever. They have to change. They have to shift. Yeah. So how do you feel about all this being put into categories or just categorized in general? Yeah, I think that's the struggle because, you know, I think artists and artistry is different for each person. Some people come into the game wanting to be famous, and so they're willing to be a, a duplicate of somebody else um, to, to gain success. And then some people, um, you know, are authentic. Like when you speak of Eric Badu and people like that, um, where that's that's a one of one, you know. And um, the beautiful thing about the '80s and coming to the '90s is that's that's what you got a lot of. You get, you had a lot of individual people. Um, so, you know, I think that's okay. And with Beyonce, I think that Beyonce is a concept artist. She takes concepts and she explores it. You know, mm. and she evolves it in, in, a, in a way, and um, and that she has the audience to to back her with that, so she can explore in a way that a lot of other artists can't. And I'm I'm excited about that because, and it's still real for her. So a lot of times you would be pigeonholed into a genre, right? If you're R&B, you have to do R&B. If you are pop, you have to do pop, and you may can cross over to country. If you're country, you kind of have to stay in that lane. And yeah. one thing I like with her is that she kind of, what Michael did and Janet did, is that they fuse genres. And she just she explores that. And I think that's great that, um, that she can do that. And she does it well. And, you know, she does it at the highest level. And so her going into country and, and, and having been a country girl herself, it makes sense that, you know, that was somewhere that she would go. So it's a really good album. I I love what I'm back again just said. She says that as an artist, you have to embrace change. You do not know what works when you try. Exactly. Yeah. And you mentioned Janet. Like, she said, okay, Controlled, she gave you Rhythm Nation, she gave you Velvet Rope, the Janet album, and then Unbreakable, years later. I mean, every album you can say that she has transitioned, she yeah. changed, the sound is different. And you can hear those influences of Island. You can hear those mm -hmm. influences of rock. You can hear those influences of hip hop and jazz. And the yeah. same for Michael as well, too, or any other artist. Usher is another one, too. Usher, every album that he has put out consistently, is, it's been sultry. It's been R&B-like. Yeah, yeah. But the sound is different. He's worked with a lot of different producers. Yeah, and, and that is up too. It's like as you grow up, you don't you can't sing the same stuff over and over again. Your life is changing. So you want to kind of be in the space that you are in at that point in your life. And that's the amazing thing about being creative is that, you know, unfortunately, 
you know, labels follow the money. <laughs> so they'll say, hey, that worked. We sold 10 million records. Let's do that again. And um, the artist has to fight to say, no, I don't feel like that anymore. I feel like this. And I remember, um, because, you know, with Janet, her first two albums were just really cookie cutter R&B pop albums, right? Yeah. And then she did Control. And then after Control um, hit, before Rhythm Nation, the label wanted her to do another Control. And they started recording stuff that was, you know, in alignment with that. And she said, no, I don't want to do this. This is not going to work. And then they started Rhythm, Rhythm Nation. So she had to fight for that. And then once that worked, then they said, okay, you win. Rhythm Nation did better than Control. So what else, what do you want to do now? And I think as artists, and even for myself, um, I remember some of the issues that I had and me to you is that we were given songs that we had to do. You know, I wrote two of the songs on the album, but after that, it was just songs that were given to us and we just had to do them. And the clothes we had to wear. So, you know, there was a lot of pushback for me, especially with clothes. It's like, okay, I don't want to, like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> I don't want to put that on if I don't know how it doesn't, it won't feel right to me. And so I would fight for that. Because, you know, we would get boxes of clothes here, put this on, we went on Soul Train. I'm like, what is this? It's like, we have no say in that. And um, and I'm a creative artist, so it's like, okay, I have to feel like when I put this on that, that it's real. Because it's going to be uncomfortable. Welcome if you just come up in. You know, it would be uncomfortable. So, but that's what, as artists, you have to fight for that. And I'm glad that Beyonce is, is um, setting that, that, um, that trend where artists are now willing to step outside the box and try other things that they were told they couldn't. Absolutely. Absolutely. And let me see. I'm back again. I just requested you love. And she says, also, you have to understand not everyone will get it, but most will understand change is needed. Absolutely. Yeah. Like every artist. Yes, but life changes. So, you know, life keeps moving, you know, and it, um, and it's interesting because when you when you think about like when I think about my parents' generation of music or my older siblings' generation of music, it was different than what I settled on, right? Outside of the oldies, because I listened to that as well, and I listened that my nephews and nieces' music is different than what I listened to. So music keeps changing and growing, and so if you want to be a legacy artist, you have to make shifts, and you have to um, really um, be attuned to what's happening in real time and in, in real life and um that it's uh, it's authentic and organic it's not something that you're trying to do like that's what i like about beyonce is that she has the success now to say i want to do this because this is what i feel and she can do it and, and like i said her her audience is built in so she can try everything and i love that about where she's at in her career but everybody's not going to get it though yeah. they're not kind of threw the audience for a loop because like i said they're so used to her singing crazy in love yeah. or dangerously in love and now you're seeing a totally different side of her whereas you see the growth from every single album that she's put out dangerously in love the the subtitled album yeah, yeah. and then the rental album and then cowboy yeah, Carter. yeah but even if you go back and listen to like her first solo album and then how she started to move into hip-hop a little bit more yeah. and she started rapping more and you know and doing stuff that was completely different than that so she was always doing it right but she just kind of slowly moved you know evolved it into a space that was comfortable for people now she's saying i'm just going to do what i feel and if people are not comfortable then that's it is what it is and her audience you know she's her audience loves her we love her so um, we're going to support her regardless because she's going to always operate at the top highest end of creativity and in, in, in her ability. So, and you know that going in. Absolutely. And photo by Madeline says that change is good. Absolutely. I've yes. got to go. I need to be up in six hours, but much love. Thank you for coming through. I'm back again and I appreciate you. you. <laughs> now, Speaking of giving, one thing you do is you give back to charities as well, too, from the Red Cross to America's Harvest. How important is giving back to you? Well, again, I think that's what we're here to do. I think when you look at life itself and how the, the universe works and how the planet works is that 
everything is in abundance. It's abundance of food. We can, you know, plant, you know, the food grows from the trees and, the, you know, so we, it's always giving. So we always have more than we need if we just kind of take away the politics, you know. Um, and I think as human beings, that's kind of what we should be doing too. So when somebody is less fortunate or in need um, and you have the means, um, then I think that we should be always in a giving space, you know, get, to always be giving. So what I did was for 20 years of my life, I worked with foster kids um, in Baltimore, and which was mm -hmm. an, a very eye-opening experience for me because everybody's story is different and it's things that we can't see or understand or, or can imagine what happened to a child. And to, to know that, it's like, okay, that I have to commit myself to being a beacon of light in this space of darkness so that um so that people understand that as you move forward there's a way out you don't have to stay in this because there's, there's going to be a point when you can start to make your own decisions and choices and um but if you have something that guides you through um then you know you may make better choices you know and so i've been fortunate enough to have a lot of kids who are, who are doing well and um you know, some some not so much, but a lot have done really well because of the agency and just the commitment to other, you know, the agency and other people like that, other agencies like that. So that's always been important to me. And I think that's something that in some capacity I'll, I'll always do. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you're also giving through your music as well to your offering a service to people, your minister. Yeah. And that is what most important because people are taking a message from your music, yeah. which is about falling, falling out of love, relationships, life experiences, yeah. all of that you cover in your music. So I told Stephen and so many are the, the same thing, which is you are healing to people. You are like the doctors out here because you're offering medicine yeah. and healing through your music. And people are listening and they're taking that all in and they're saying, wow, I've been through this. So I might know someone who's been through this same experience as well, too. So it's healing to people. It's therapeutic in a way. Well, that's that's the goal. You know, um, that's always the goal is that, you know, it's enough drama in the world. <laughs> you know, um, people are going through things and sometimes even just in passing a smile could just really shift somebody's day um you know just a kind word just to being just being nice and just showing up um as as in your best self is always the goal for me so you know and it's not always received well because sometimes people want to stay in that space that they're in you know everybody doesn't want to get out of the, the the space that you know dark space or whatever they're, that's their norm that's their comfort zone and um, but as you, I still have to. If I have it, then I have to put it out. And if it's not received, fine. But the people who receive it, you know, I hope that it blesses them, and I hope and, and they and the you know and bless me in the same as I move about my life. And I feel I feel it when I'm moving about. So we've went through this journey together. You've given so many gems throughout this interview, and I had such a great conversation. Thank you. What is next? The album is out. Morning Sun. The album is out. You have so much that is coming out. What else can we expect from you in the future? So the single comes out, um, Holding On comes out on June 17th. Um, the video is done. Um, we actually shot three videos in one day. Uh, okay. so those are yeah, so those are coming too. So I'm excited about that. Um, then I have performances that are coming. Um, and I already started working on new music, uh, writing new stuff um, for next year or another time. But, you know, like I, like I said, writing is my first passion. So I always feel like I have to get back to that to, you know, to feel what I need to feel. Um, so I've already started that. Um, and so I'm excited. It's, I have a lot planned for the rest of the year. So it should be fun. Have to stay tuned. And you guys asked about performances. You have to make sure that you're following Devon here. And Darkness has a question. This is now question hour. So, Fashion Dolls, if you guys have any questions that you would like to ask Devon, ask away. She says that how do you climb out of the darkness of yourself? That is a powerful question. Yeah. 
um, sometimes you have to sit in it for a minute to 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 understand the root of it, right? And um, and once you start to do that, you start clearing out all those things, people, places, and things that you contribute to it. Um, I think that's the it, darkness is hard because we all go through it. Um, but the one thing is that it's necessary for growth and change, right? And so it takes you, that experience can take you to somewhere greater if you allow it to. But I think for me, it's to not try to push it away or to, to act like it doesn't exist, but to look at the, the, the origin of it, the root of it, and say, let me see what this is so that when I get rid of it, that it doesn't come back. Or if it tries to come back, I know what it is and I can, I know how to keep it away. And um, I think that's been the goal for me. And I think even in the season of my life, it's just really trying to energy. I, I'm just really keen on energy now. Like, if it doesn't work, I, there's no, it's no hard feelings or anything. I just don't want to bring anything that's gonna to to shade what I'm trying to do with my life. Um, and I don't, you know. And if people feel that for me, I don't want to give that. So, uh, you know, that's kind of where it is. But yeah, so sit in it see it look at it um discover what it is and and then slowly move out of it so that you'll never have to return to it and it could be people it could be places. any more questions be, fashion dolls yeah. before we wrap up and i hope you all took something away from the gems that divine parted in this conversation i wouldn't even really consider this as an interview more so like the comment <laughs> Yes, a lot of people want to know about getting into the music business, yeah. but they don't understand the drive, the passion, yeah. the, the behind the scenes of it that goes on in order to get where that. They see the singles, they see yeah. the gold, they see the success. Yeah. It's a lot, a lot to it. A lot more. It's, yeah, it's, it's a business first. So I think that's coming in. That's what should be known. It's, it's a business first. So if you don't know the business, then you're in for a bumpy ride. My last question with while we're waiting on everybody else to come in is, if you could go back in time at a younger age in your career, getting in the business, because you recorded the single at 16 years old, mm -hmm. what would you tell that 16 year old version of yourself? Just stay passionate. And, and, and I believe I've done it. I've done what I was here to do. And, um, and I've always said, and my father was, oh, what my father would always say is that if you just touch one person, then you know you, you've done your job. And um, so, at 16, I was just so focused and just so you know ready to um, to to do music, and uh, I'm still doing it. So I'm I'm grateful for everything that that 16 year old went through, that 24 year old went through, the 30 year old went through. So I'm grateful for all of it. So I wouldn't change anything about it. And um, I would just say, you know. And thank you for staying on course <laughs> because you got me here. Absolutely. Because I asked that question because when we get a certain age in our career, if we easily go back in time and we look back to when we first started and mm -hmm. we look to where we're at now, you have to go back in time mm -hmm. in order to kind of get forward to the present. And that's yeah. important. Yeah. DJ Juicy, that's one person. I live by doing this, my weekly shows. <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, darkness that's facing it like that is so brave and processing it without self judgment. Mm -hmm. Love that. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah, because if you don't face it, then it stays and it's going to be with you for a very long time. So, you know, the choice is to either sit in it, discover it, and let it go, or just to sit in it and let it move with you into your future and uh, i think for me i didn't want that so i just had to remove people and remove thoughts and remove you know remove things that was was keeping me from moving forward in my life not even just my career but in my life you know even with the idea of being shy it's like i can't let that hold me back you know so i discovered okay i get it i see where that comes from but this still needs to happen and i'm ready for it yeah, it can't hinder you or hold you back. Once you conquer that fear, it is such a powerful feeling. And I've had a nervousness 
speaking in front of large crowds of people, but my teacher when I was in high school, public speaking, I took public speaking. Oh, wow. She made us all stand up and we had to recite the words to Shakespeare. And that was nerve wracking in front of the class and everything. Yeah. But it helped me. I see what she was doing. She was preparing us for the real world so yes. that we would have a goal yes. to be able to speak out and say whatever it is that we want to say. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was a, a great um, tool. Uh, you know, I didn't have, well, I did have it in French class. We would have to do it in French. <laughs> so we would have to get up and do a report in French. And that was nerve wracking. But, you know, I blanked out. I did it. <laughs> but it's like I blank out. So when I get on stage, it's kind of like it's rehearsed. Everything's known. I know what I'm doing. I, I feel more comfortable there, you know, so it's a blessing. Any last minute questions for myself or Devon Fashion Dolls? I hope you guys enjoyed today's show and conversation. And to anybody, my other question, I keep saying last question. I could go on. The conversation is so good. <laughs> but artists, the next generation, we see an influx of new artists that are coming out from the Oxford, the Londons, to the Lucky Days, to the Scissors, yeah. the next generation of R&B artists. You've been in the game for a long time. What advice would you give to the next generation of up and coming R&B artists out here? Well, you know, they, those the ones you named are doing great. You know, they're great. You know, so they just got to go through the course. I think for the people who are trying to get in the game, though, I would say do the work because, you know, this generation is so everything's so microwavable. Just poof, you, you have it, you know, because of social media, because of you can record on your phone, you can take pictures with your phone, all these things. But you have to do the work. You have to study the craft like any person who's great, like, you know, in order to sustain it, because you can get a quick hit. But do you want to sustain that? So now you have to do the work. And um, and that's what I would say, because I, I come across a lot of people who who want the success, but are not really willing to put in the time. So I think that's the key for the artists who are already doing it that are out now. I think they're doing great, you know, but the people trying to get in is do, do the work. The competition is even thicker now because, you know, everything's online. So you have more to compete with. Like when I was at Meet You, you know, getting a deal with the only way you could get in right uh, but now everybody can put a record out so that's the competition so just just do the work and then just find your lane and that's you so you can be one of one so i think that's the key and to add on to that individuality is key find your own sound find your own voice yep. because there's so many artists out here and again we can it's okay to be compared to other artists yes. but find your lane Find yeah. what works for you. Individuality yeah. is key. Yeah, your work should have a purpose. It should have a meaning. It should it should have something that is that connects, and that it it only attaches to you. When people hear it, they see it. Whatever it is, they know that it's you, right? That you are the messenger of that product and the music. Um, so, and I think that's always been important for me is that to keep it real. So when I'm doing photo shoots or recording or doing videos, it's like I have to be me. I don't want to copy Michael. I don't want to copy Usher. I don't want to copy anything. You know, I yeah. see it, but that's their thing. And, I, you know, I'm grateful for it because it has inspired me. But when I'm in front of the camera or in the studio, I have to be my authentic self. And I think that's the key for it that I would tell younger artists coming who want to get into the business is be yourself. It, that is enough. Being yourself is enough. Absolutely. To anybody watching this, originality and individuality, find your own sound, find your own yes. voice, find your own sound. And someone asked me that in one of my interviews. They said, what makes you aside from other hosts that do the same thing you do? I said, my personality is what makes me different. Yeah. Everybody has their own niche. Yeah. I'm not going to be like brother K Tubes, shout outs to him, or my brother Demario Jobs, King Jobs, or my other brother. Tony Holly or Kenneth Stallings or my best friend colleague Bubs the God, everybody has their own yeah. that works for them. Yeah. And you have to find it out. Exactly. Because you can only be you. There's nobody else like you but you. 
So that's who you should bring to everything that you do, you know, and discover you and, and bring that to, to, to people because it could influence, inspire other people to, to do the same, you know. So I think that's the part about living is that, you know, God made you to be you, you know. And that's the beautiful thing. When we discover that, it's like, wow, he, you know, we have so much in us that we can, that, that we need to give out. Like you hosting this, that you're being a host and, you know, your show, you're giving this out to the world. This is for the world, but you're being you and, and I'm being me and my music and my work as well. So, and, and we connect, you know, and it's a beautiful thing when that happens because we see people being authentically themselves. Absolutely. And authenticity is key. Yes. Let me read some comments. Fashion Dolls, before we conclude. Um, Photos by Madeline says, love this interview. Love your mindset, Devon. Best of luck to you. Oh, thank you. you. Your mindset thank you. will take you far. Thank you. And thank you, King David. You always come through. You always show me so much love and support. I appreciate all of y'all. Y'all have been amazing this entire week kicking off the month of June, Black Music Month, and I think this conversation was perfect. Thank you. Thank you for having me, too. You Thank you. You are so welcome. Final thoughts before we close out. The singles are out. You guys can go and check them out. The album is titled Morning Sun. Make sure you guys please go and check it out. Amazing music. Your love is and forever and always. Please go and check out the singles. They are out <laughs> right now. So before we let you go, Divine, where can everyone check you out? And what are some gems that you would like to give to other artists out here to inspire them to just create, to do more? Uh, um, so I'm on social media. Um, Devon Howard 3000 is usually the moniker for Instagram, Spotify. Yeah, Spotify, <laughs> um, everywhere. I think I just use Devon Howard 3000 for everything. Um, YouTube, Twitter um facebook um so the thing that i would like to tell artists like, again is that make sure you love this thing because it comes with its ebbs and flows right it's gonna it's gonna feel different at different times you're gonna want to be in it you're gonna want to be out of it but when you love it you're committed to it you know you you're willing to fight those battles that will come but but and do the work do the work that it is your best it's just you don't have to be nobody else just, you know, just do the work. And I think from there, um, amazing things will happen. And be patient, too. It Like, everything comes when it's time. And so um, just be patient. Um, the one thing for me is that I never really looked at it. Oh, I have to get it before I get this age. I never really thought like mm -hmm. that. So it's like, as, as long as I have it to give, then that's what it's going to be. So, And just, like I said, just do the work and just be authentically yourself. Absolutely. Um, Sherry Dabney says, I love you. B Day, I'm so proud of this, you. I love you, Robin. You have always cousin. inspired me. <laughs> hey, Sherry, that's my cuz. Yeah. And yeah. look at that comment right there. Love you, my brother. So very happy for you and so proud of you. Looking forward to all that's to come. Thank you so much. The team. Coltes, that's my brother. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. It's been it's been a pleasure, and I've had a lot of fun. I had a great time. We got to do this again. This can't yes. be the last. Time. Yes, that's for sure. Just let me know, and I'm, I'm here. I sure will. And we're gonna set something up. I'm gonna get in touch with you, and we're gonna set something sure. up for the fall. Love to have you back on. Sounds so, good. Fashion dolls. Before we go, the final thought of the day comes from Alexander Graham Bell. And it ties into everything we talked about, which is finding your own voice, individuality, and authenticity. Concentrate all your thoughts upon the work in hand. The sun's rays do not burn until brought to a focus. And that means that you have to remain focused, remain centered, and surround yourself with people who are going to keep you on that right path to where you need to go. And that is all Fashion Dolls. I love you all. And speaking of Friends Week... <laughs> <laughs> An artist, Ricky Taylor, my friend, joins me tomorrow, Fashion Dolls at 4, and we will see you then. And Devon, it was such a pleasure. I had such a great time. Thank you again. Thank you.
Right. And you guys can go and check out the album Morning Sun out now on all platforms. Love, your love is and forever and always out now, Fashion Dolls. And the single will be released June 17th. So make sure you guys please go and check it out. Follow Devon on all platforms and check out his music. You won't be disappointed. It's easy listen. You can relax, literally zone out, pour yourself some cognac, however you zone <laughs> out, whatever works for you. Do it, Fashion Dolls. And I love you all. And Thank you all so much for tuning in to Style by Stevie Daytime, and see you tomorrow. Talk to you later.